Overbites, underbites, crossbites, deep bites, open bites. There are so many different bites that orthodontists treat. And in today's video, we're gonna review some of them and a few of the treatment options for these different bites. So stay tuned. What's up guys, missed you all. Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. Sorry, I took a little bit of an absence there. I had a little bit of a creative role, plus I was kind of exploring Michigan, kind of seeing as much as I can out here before the winter strikes and I'm kind of gonna be stuck indoors. So that's kind of where I've been. I've been exploring Michigan, visiting family back at home and things like that. So I've taken a little bit of time off, but I have a couple of new video ideas coming forward in these next few weeks, so stay tuned for those. And if you guys have any videos that you wanna see me make, let me know in the comment section of today's video. While you're down there, as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. So like the video said, in today's video, I wanna dive into a few of the different bites that orthodontists look at during our initial consultation and throughout your treatment to make sure that you're not only getting a beautiful smile, but also a proper bite with good facial harmony, okay? Everything I talk about in today's video is very, very like case dependent. Just because you're gonna have a certain overbite or overjet or underbite or something like that doesn't mean that the treatment options that I discussed in today's video are the best for you. These are all conversations that you should be having with your orthodontist at your adjustment appointments or your treatment consultation. But basically in today's video, I wanna give you some of the verbiage or words you can use so that you can more appropriately communicate with your orthodontist. As always, if you guys want, I'm gonna put the timestamps out in this corner so you can jump ahead wherever you want in today's video or whatever bite you might have or wanna learn more about. So the different bites I wanna talk about in today's video are cross bites of the back teeth, overbites, over jets, deep bites, and open bites. So those are the five primary bites that you might have, and they're not mutually exclusive, meaning that you can have a cross bite, but also have an over jet or things like that. And if these words mean completely nothing to you, don't worry, we're gonna dive into each one of them, as well as talk about a few of the treatment options because I have full videos on almost each one of these things. So instead of just being redundant and talking about it all again, I might just link out to the video that goes into more detail down in the description of today's video or tagged out in the corners here, okay? But the first thing I wanna talk about are crossbites. And there's different types of crossbites. There's crossbites of the front teeth, which are called underbites, or crossbites of the back teeth, which are called posterior, which means back teeth, crossbite. And this can happen either on one or two sides of the jaw. Basically, really simply put, what a crossbite is, is that your upper teeth should always be sitting outside of your lower teeth all the way around. I mean that when you bite down, your upper teeth should be ahead of your lower teeth a little bit in the front, as well as all the way to the back. Now, if we have a tooth or a group of teeth that are inside of the lower teeth, that's called a cross bite. It's not a stable bite, it's not a very functional bite, it can actually lead to early wear of the teeth. I'm not gonna talk about the front teeth right now because there's a whole section in this video talking about underbites, but if we have a cross bite of the back teeth, this can be treated very predictably when patients are younger, you know, in their early teens, or even in phase one, which are in patients that are under 10 years old. And this is because the upper jaw is actually two bones when we're younger, the, the maxilla, this jaw right here. And as we age, that maxilla starts to fuse together and kind of like a zipper closes together, which makes it really hard to expand. So that's why we recommend early intervention for orthodontics when it's necessary, because we can actually expand that upper jaw more predictably using something like an expander. The way expanders work is that they're cemented onto the patient's back teeth and they're turned at home, generally at nights. And as this expander gets wider and wider, we can actually expand that upper jaw so that it sits in a proper position with the lower jaw. This will correct our posterior cross bite of the back teeth and allow for a functional bite. So you might be thinking, oh my God, if I'm an adult, I can't do this. Well, you can, but there's a little bit more of an invasive process to have this done. This can be done either by using a type of jaw surgery, which is called a SARP, so surgically assisted SA, rapid palatal expansion, or you can use something with mini screws, which is called a MARP, which is called a mini screw assisted rapid palatal expansion. And this is when we place actually screws into the palate with the expander to broaden that upper jaw. Like I said, this is a way more of an invasive process and I can talk about it in a different video, but this is for more of the adult patients that have a constricted or narrow maxilla. What you'll see is sometimes there's only a crossbite of one side and this is called a unilateral crossbite. And this is oftentimes caused by a patient that bites down and has a narrow jaw and shifts to one side compared to the other. Because when they bite down and the teeth hit in an uncomfortable way, we tend to shift to the side that's comfortable. Over time, this can lead to like asymmetric growth or an asymmetric bite. So like I said, early intervention for these cross bites are really, really important. Okay, next up, let's talk about overjets. And this is a common term that's mispronounced as overbites. And this is how far your upper teeth stick ahead of your lower teeth. So in the horizontal dimension, how far your upper teeth are ahead of your lower teeth. A lot of people, like I said, call this an overbite, but that's not the right word. Overbite is how much they overlap vertically. And we'll talk about that in just a second when we talk about deep bites. So an overjet can be caused by a few different things. It can either be because your upper teeth or jaw grew too far forward or your lower jaw is too far underdeveloped. And the way these are treated are really dependent on what caused the problem. 
And like I said, I've had a, a ton of videos on this topic specifically, so I'll link them out in this corner, as well as put them in the description of today's video. But there are a few things we can do in this case, and it really depends on the cause of that overjet, right? And it also really depends on the severity. But if you have a mildly excessive overjet, we can correct this with elastics. And when I say mildly excessive, that's because you should have a little bit of overjet. A proper bite has the upper teeth a little bit ahead of and overlapping the lower teeth. But if you have too much overjet, it can again lead to early wear and an improper bite. So in mild cases, we can use elastics to bring those upper teeth back and lower teeth forward to achieve an appropriate bite. But if you have a bit of an excessive overjet, we might have to use something like springs which are attached to the teeth and push the lower teeth forward and pull the upper teeth back in order to get that proper bite. Moving along our little spectrum of severity here, if it's a little bit more severe and you have some crowding involved, your orthodontist might recommend extraction of some teeth in order to achieve that appropriate bite by bringing those upper teeth back and again those lower teeth forward to achieve an appropriate bite. And if it's super severe, and in specific cases, your orthodontist might think it's more advantageous for you to surgically bring either the lower jaw forward or the upper jaw up in order to basically achieve a more appropriate bite. Because as orthodontists, we can only move teeth within the bone. And if the bones are not harmonious with one another, we're not able to fit the teeth appropriately together. Yes, can we get the teeth to move into the right spot? Potentially, but in certain cases, we might actually push the teeth out of the bone and that's not stable and it's not good for your teeth health. And we definitely would not want to do that to you. So in specific cases, when it's very severe, your orthodontist might actually recommend jaw surgery to correct the severe overjet. So let's flip to the other side. If an overjet is the upper teeth being too far forward compared to the lower teeth, what's the other way around? It's not called an underjet, it's actually called an underbite. So that's why a lot of people mistakenly call overjet overbite because you know you would think the opposite of an underbite is an overbite, but it's not. The opposite of an underbite is an overjet and the opposite of an overbite is technically an open bite, but we'll get to that. So what's an underbite then? So an underbite is when your lower jaw or teeth are too far forward compared to the upper jaw or teeth. And this can be caused by either the lower jaw or teeth being too far forward or your upper jaw and teeth being too far back. Again, the treatment for these depend a lot on what is the root of this problem. And I have a whole video that talks about underbites. So what can we do to treat this? Well, if it's a minor case, what we can do is use elastics to push the upper teeth forward or lean the lower teeth back in order to achieve an appropriate bite. Moving along our spectrum of severity here, if it's a little bit more severe, your orthodontist might recommend extraction of some teeth to camouflage the severity of the underbite which means that they might recommend extraction of lower teeth or maybe lower and upper teeth, but different ones in order to get that bite to fit together properly. But let's say you have a severe underbite that can't be corrected with just elastics or extractions. Well, in those cases, your orthodontist, again, might work with an oral surgeon to surgically either bring that upper jaw forward with the teeth or set the lower jaw back, really depending on what is the problem jaw, either an underdeveloped upper jaw, an overdeveloped lower jaw, or maybe a combination of both. So we've talked about a narrow upper jaw an upper and lower jaw that are either too far forward or too far backwards, right? So, so over jets and underbites. So next I wanna talk about the vertical dimension, which is the upper teeth's relationship to the lower teeth, either overlapping them too much, which is called a deep bite, or not touching at all, which is called an open bite. So let's first get started with deep bites, which are excessive amounts of overbite. Like I said, you wanna have a little bit of overlap where the upper teeth go ahead of the lower teeth. But if you have your upper teeth too far over the lower teeth, what happens is what's called a deep bite. And a deep bite can be problematic again because this could lead to early wear. It can lead to an improper bite and it can also lead to your lower incisors down these teeth biting against the palate of your upper teeth and causing inflammation and it's just not favorable. So what can we do? Well, there's a few things that we can do in these cases of excessive deep bites. One thing we can do is do something called bite turbos, which are those little blue blocks that I've talked about in a previous video and they're stuck onto the teeth to basically open up your bite. This will allow for your orthodontist to open up your bite and put braces on your top and bottom teeth in order to achieve a proper bite for you. Another thing that your orthodontist can do is use something like a bite plate. And a bite plate does something very, very similar, but a different, in a different way. It's basically either removable or cemented, and it makes it so that your upper and lower teeth don't touch all the way, so that we can open up that deep bite and make it so you have an appropriate overbite and overjet. Your orthodontist can use certain wires, like these things that are called reverse curve of speed wires. And these wires are basically tied in and they push the lower teeth down in order to get rid of that deep bite. Or in specific cases, your orthodontist might actually use these mini screws or mini implants, which are called TADs. And I have a whole video about these things, but we can place it on either the upper or lower jaws, really depending on which jaw is causing the issue with the deep bite. And it can pull the teeth upward or downward in order to achieve an appropriate amount of overbite. Again, like I said earlier, these are all very case dependent. So your orthodontist will do what's best for you. These are just some of the ways that these deep bites can be treated. And in certain cases where it's minor enough, your orthodontist might be able to just align that deep bite with braces alone. So don't worry too much about it. 
Just know that these are some of the ways that we treat those deep bites. And last but not least, let's talk about open bites. And an open bite is what I actually think is one of the most uncomfortable bites. And it's when you bite down and only one or two teeth in the back are touching and all of your front teeth are open. So I had a really minor open bite when I was younger, but these can range from being pretty severe to pretty minor, right? And they're actually really annoying because you're not able to bite into things. And you can imagine how frustrating that could be. You know, if someone's trying to bite into a sandwich or bite into a pizza or something like that, you can't actually pierce the food because your teeth aren't touching the front. So you have to kind of chew or bite on the side of your teeth. But let's talk about it. What are some of the things that your orthodontist can do to treat these open bites? Well, a lot of the times you have to look again at the cause of the open bite. Is it caused because the tongue is posturing in that position? Is it caused by someone actually sucking their thumb? I didn't suck my thumb. That was not the cause of my open bite. Is it due to unfavorable growth patterns? So the treatment again is very dependent on what is the cause of this open bite, right? But let's say you have a minor open bite. Well, in minor cases, elastics can be used to actually pull the upper teeth down and lower teeth up so that we can achieve an appropriate bite. In certain cases with these elastics, your orthodontist might also be pushing your back teeth inward so that your bite can shut down, like kind of like removing a wedge to cause your bite to shut down and achieve a more stable bite. In cases where it's a habit that's causing this, what your orthodontist might do is use a habit breaker, which will stop someone from either sucking their thumb or posturing their tongue in the wrong position. So this can be like a tongue crib. So what this will do is basically hold the tongue back from posturing in the improper position and prevent someone from sucking their thumb if that was the cause of the open bite. But let's say it's a little bit more severe than that. Let's say it wasn't a minor enough to be fixed with just elastics and the habit breaking didn't fix this problem. This is more common in your moderate to severe cases in your later adolescents or adults. In these cases, we might either have to use jaw surgery or extractions in order to achieve an appropriate bite. This might not always be the case, so I don't want you guys to jump to this assumption, but if you have an open bite that's too severe for just elastics alone or habit therapy, well, in those cases, we might have to use extractions to bring those upper teeth back or lower teeth back and close down that open bite. Again, jaw surgery can be used in these cases to actually push the upper jaw upward because a lot of these cases, what you'll have is vertical growth of the upper jaw leading to like a longer face. In these cases, what we can do is surgically impact the upper jaw, which will allow the lower jaw to swing shut and we can fix our open bite that way. Okay. So a lot of stuff I threw at you guys today. I know it's a ton of information, but I hope you guys found it useful. Like I said, I have videos on most of the things we talked about in today's video on the channel, but I wanted to kind of have a comprehensive video where we talked about a lot of these different bites, okay? If you guys have anything that I haven't talked about yet on this channel that you want me to dive more into, drop them in the comment section of today's video. If you haven't yet already, be sure to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more of these videos. I know I took a little bit of a leave, but hopefully I'll be back for more regular content with you guys. But that's all I have for today's video. So for now, Dr. Greg, 